Hello everyone, Dr. Ziyad Tahir here. This video tutorial is about 2D transient heat transfer analysis in Abacus 2020. And that is problem description. It is an aluminium fin and they are used to dissipate heat from a device. So this is an example from book, Finite Element Analysis, Theory and Application with ANSYS. Chapter 9, Analysis of Two-Dimensional Heat Transfer Problem, that is transient example in topic 9.7. So, I have taken problem from here. Although you can verify your results with analytical solutions, but like Abacus results can be compared with uh, which are published in the book. So, that is aluminium fins, its thermal conductivity, density, and specific heat capacity are given. And the section of fin is shown here. So actually there are three fins. So the fin is initially at a uniform temperature of 28 degrees Celsius. That is the initial temperature. Assume that shortly after the device is turned on, the temperature of the base of fin is suddenly increased to 90 degrees. So the base temperature is 90 degree. The temperature of surrounding air is 28 degrees Celsius with the corresponding heat transfer coefficient of 30 watt per meter square Kelvin. Plot temperature variation from base to fin along center of fin. So this is a symmetric problem. So a single fin can also be modeled here. So what are the steps in Abacus? So there are main three steps, modeling, analysis, and visualization of the results. So before modeling, you need to check the units. So units should be meter, Kelvin, and watt. But if you are not using uh, radiative heat transfer, so then you can use degree Celsius and uh, for degree Celsius for temperature, and that for thermal conductivity and heat transfer coefficients, you can use them in degree Celsius. So for this problem, the problem which is given here, so all dimensions of the fin are in millimeters. So I need to convert them into meters. So and then and then I solve it. So the first step is to set work directory. So I want to save all CAE files and ODB file in chapter 9. So I just copy its address and then file set work directory and here I'll say OK. So now, now the first step in modeling is to create part and you need to use shell planner and overall dimension of that here is 100 millimeter or 0.1 meter. Okay, so here you can just simple click on part or you can double click here, part and that is fin. Okay, so 2D deformable shell and because it's 100 millimeter, so I'm almost taking the double of it, which is 0 0.0, 0 0.2 continue and then here with the connected lines, like starting from there to that is one meter, sorry, point 0.1. So I can draw that one. So that model is being sketched. And then dimension, auto dimension. So select and then dimensions are being plotted there. Uh, so that is point zero 0.03 here. Uh, I have drawn it in a different way. That is uh, 30 millimeter, 0 0.03, that is 0 0.01, and that is 0 0.025, that is 0 0.01. So in the base like is 0 0.01, fin is 0 0.03, and then that is 0 0.02, then, then it is 0 0.025. So just to verify it, let's say that dimension of this one, so it is 0.25. Okay, dimension of that is 0.3. Then 
then dimension of this one okay so just to check that what's the dimension of this it is 0 0.01 okay so rest of all dimensions are okay so the model has been sketched okay so if you don't if you want to delete that one okay so no need of it because it does not affect anything so done and then that is part has been created that is the part spin is created okay so the next one is we need to create surfaces so why we need to create surfaces we need to create that first for the base because a 90 degree celsius temperature we need to apply on that and then rest of all surfaces they are exposed to outside media so two set of surfaces we need to create here okay so in the part just expand it in the features or in the features uh, tools you can create a surface there create a surface and then that is i can say that fin surface okay continue and select the region for the surface so that is being selected okay and then just clicking on double clicking on that that is base continue and then that is done so you can see that is the base that is a fin surface okay now plot temperature variation from the base to fin along the center of the fin so for that purpose for that purpose uh, dotum plane is required so that nodes can be selected easily from that or we can create a partition because if the partition is done so then you will get a sequence of uh, nodes and this step like create dotum plane or partition it is only to plot temperature variation so for that one here in tools or in the part module uh, from here a plane can be uh, from the module or here you can go tools and then dotum dotum plane and dotum plane midway between two points so these points are being shown so i want to draw it midway between the these two points okay and that is a dotum plane created here midway between these two points so once that is created so in the feature i can see that that is a dotum plane and then again i can go tool partition create a partition of the face and that is using dotum plane and that i'm going to select that dotum plane and that partition is being created so done the purpose of once again of creating that partition that uh, when uh, the nodes number are being labeled so you will get a sequence on these uh, on that partition and along that otherwise you you can leave that if temperature distribution is not required next step is to create material and for the material uh, density specific heat capacity and thermal conductivity are given so here in the property module i can create that aluminum aluminum and then density i can here add with the general and density is 2800 then in the thermal thermal conductivity thermal conductivity is 170 then again in thermal specific heat and the specific heat is 870 okay so density here thermal conductivity is 170 so conductivity is 170 then density is 2800 here and then specific heat capacity as 870 and that is a specific so mod that is being created material after creating material then is creating section and assigning section so here create section so like you can say it as fin 
solid, homogeneous, continue, material is aluminium, plain stress for and thickness, no need of it. Okay. And then you can see here the section fin has been created. Okay. And that is a solid homogeneous. Then assign section. So that one done. So now section has been assigned and that is done. One section has been assigned, it turned to green. Next step is mesh seed, assign mesh control, mesh part, and assign element type. So here in the module, it is mesh or that is a mesh empty. So starting from there, it is approximate global size. Let's say apply, it is a very fine mesh. Um, it is a very coarse mesh. I'll go for 0 0.001, apply. So that is one millimeter. Okay, and then assign mesh control. Select the region to for mesh control, done. And that is free quadrilateral free and then medial axis okay so that is and the next one is mesh so that is being meshed and then assign element type select the region to assign element type so done and then in the family you will get that heat transfer so element library standard Geometric order is linear and then quadratic. DC do DC two D four. Okay, so that done. So mesh is done. Next one, need to create a set and that set is required to plot temperature variation. So again, in part, create set and then type is node. So in part or here set okay so set and this one is just let's say fin node mark unsorted make unsorted set continue fin here free and add before and then along that dotum plane i am going to select so that is being done okay so if I click on that, okay. Next tab is assembly, create instance. So here assembly, that is instance. Okay, so that is now instance has been created. In assembly, that is one instance has been created. Next step is step and create step and step is heat transfer. So here you'll have step, that is create step and then it is, let's say heat transfer, okay. And then here is heat transfer, continue and then transient because it is a transient heat transfer problem. So just, uh, I'll explain that once that model is ready. So for the time being, it is steady state I'm going to do. Okay. So step is created, but it is steady state instead of transient. Then the interactions, interactions, create interaction and this film condition and is to for that fin surface to apply that heat transfer coefficient convective heat transfer coefficient and then that temperature so then in interaction module interaction okay so create interaction here that is fin surface, let's say, and then surface film condition continue. And it's, I have already created a surface for that. And then that is a fin surface. 
continue and then film coefficient so film coefficient is 30 and temperature is 28 so that is 30 and the temperature is 28 okay so now you can see that here in all that it is being interaction they are being created in the load module create predefined field and that is the initial temperature so for that purpose here are predefined fields here predefined field you can double click on that predefined field or you can go into the load and here you'll have create predefined field and it is initial that initially what is the temperature so go to others temperature continue and then i am going to so that is initial temperature continue and select the region for film for press done for calculated temperature so i'll select that whole of fins and base so that is done and then the magnitude of that is 28 because the base temperature uh, over uh, like the for the overall temperature is 28 okay so that is done now the last step is to give base temperature for that one in the load need to create boundary condition and then temperature so here you have load and that is a create boundary condition and then it is base temperature base temperature others temperature and step is heat transfer step is heat transfer other temperature continue and then i have created a base for that so that is so select the region for boundary condition so that is the this edge and that edge so done and then the magnitude of this is 90 okay so now all that steps for the modeling they are done so once again quickly check that if everything is fine so the material is aluminium conductivity 170 density 2800 specific heat capacity 870 then interactions fin, sur uh, fin surface uh, convective heat transfer coefficient 30 and then the temperature is 28 then initial conditions in the predefined field that is the initial temperature of whole of that fin that is 28 and then in the boundary condition temperature of the base is 90 so now everything is done so i am going to save that model rename it as that is transient heat transfer example and the same one i'll okay so then and then file save that is chapter 9 and then transient heat transfer example okay so now the molding is done next main step is analysis and job create job data check and then submit so here in jobs and job name is the same one dht example continue okay and then here submit it say history output is not requested so it's not interested in that so it will it's being submitted then it start running and after some time it is going to complete so it is being completed it's mean model so far is okay and then i'm going to submit it so once it is being submitted it will take some time 
to run and then to complete. It's being completed and then you got these results. And then here, that is a deformed shape, that is a heat flux, and then that is a nodal temperature. You can see that is a nodal temperature, but remember the low, uh, this problem is being solved using steady state condition. So once it is working for steady state condition, now I'll go to step again, step, step manager, and here you have, so I'm going to edit it. Edit, and that is a transient. So the time period, let's say the time period, uh, what is required for this one is, I want to model it for 10 minutes. So 10 minutes, like 600 seconds. So transient 600 seconds, okay. Okay, and then here you have initial. So initial is like increment size. So that is one and then the minimum, let's say initial is 0 0.1, okay, and the minimum initial is 0.1 and the minimum is that must be less than that. So 0 0.01, let's say, and maximum number of increment, they are 100, and then maximum allowable temperature per increment, let's say 1 degree Celsius, and remember that it is these are the conditions now okay and then now in the step again these incrementation are important because that is a 600 and sometime what will happen your uh, model is being aborted so first i'll show you that how it is aborted and then i'll fix it so I am going to submit that. It's being submitted. It will take some time to run and then I'll see. So now instead of completed, it is aborted. And once it is aborted, I want to check that error. Here you can go right click on that and then monitor. And in the monitor, there are errors. And it said time increment required is less than the minimum specified. So now you need to change that minimum one. So I'm going to change the minimum. The minimum, I'm going to change it as 0 0.001. Okay, I'm going to submit again and then see that's going on. So it's once again aborted and let's say monitor it. So monitor and then again that says the time increment is less than the minimum. The time increment required is less than the minimum specified. This time it says that too many increment needed to complete the step. So then I'll go back again and then increase the number of increments. So let's say 500. Okay, and then going now it has been completed. So for transient heat transfer, then the most tricky part is the time period. Usually for steady state, it is one second. And for time period, it depends that how much uh, time you want to simulate it. So I use it there as 10 minutes. So you can use for one minute. It doesn't make any difference. But the most important is the increment size, initial. So we have what you are going to start and then the minimum. So you need to first adjust, like the maximum is 600, but the minimum uh, initial should be, the minimum should be more than the initial. And then I first up use 100. If it's not working, then you can increase it. So I have increased it to 500 and then that is being completed. Now that model part has been done and then analysis part has been done. 
and then the next one is results visualization so for results i'll right click on that and then go to results or otherwise you can open that odb file directly or file open and then that is a transit heat transfer example you can open that and then this one is the temperature gradient and that is node temperature and then you can simply simulate it here like how the temperature is going to increase and then you can see that uh, so that is a simulation and then that is the final one is being done okay so that is uh, from here that is the initial and then that is the set final step and it takes 331 increments and then you can see that what is going on because that overall process is being performed over six seconds or six minutes and then you can see as time is going to increase and with that the temperature is being increasing or the heat is being propagated or let's say that heat flux so that initially you have like this way and then the all heat at the start is uh, in the first step it is on the base okay and then as the temperature is going to increase or as the time is going to increase then you can see that heat flux is being dissipated so that is how you can visualize the results now the next is you need to plot temperature distribution variation from base to fin along the center of the fin and for that one you need to create path and type is node list uh, node list you have already that okay so tools path create path and that is let's say uh, path one from the node list continue and in the fin you have one node list so node selection node set selection add before you have that one here okay and that is the nodes you have okay so now most important is to know the sequence of those that that is the important one so i'll apply node labels there labels show node labels okay and then i am just interested in these one so that along here so the first node is 8 then 19 20 in a sequence and that 2 is actually 2 is actually right in the end so i simply copy that 2 from here and then delete it from there and then right at the end okay so now you have created that path so you can tool path manager and then you can see that one path has been created okay so now uh, you want to, uh, to plot that temperature distribution along temperature variation from base to fin along the center of the fin so here xy plot and the source is path continue and then here you have nt1 so it is being plotted here so you can see that here that is a two uh, distance along the path the total is 40 centimeter Okay, and then you can also have that in because it's a y in the vertical direction. Okay, so true distance, and then the temperature at the base is 90, and at the tip of the fin is 88.263. Okay, so this way you can plot temperature distribution, and sometimes you need to uh, get some figures from ODB. So then viewport annotation option you can use so here viewport 
and view board annotation options. So here is a journal. You have prior. So let's say set all of apply. So you can see only model. Set all on and apply. So you have here compass that is not required sometime. Then then you have triad. So that triad is sometimes necessary. Then legends is required. And then statement block. Okay, that one is sometimes not required. Okay. And the title sometimes is not required. So that is okay. And then you can adjust the position of that triad like uh, its size is 6%, so you can change it to 10%, is a bigger one. You can change the position of the legend, it is 2% uh, in X direction. So let's say I want, I'm putting it at 80%, so that, or let's say 88%. Okay, and then you can change its format to from engineering. So that is engineering. And then uh, you can set it font. There are so many options there. So you can change any font for that. And then uh, you can go for the fixed decimal places like three. I can, so that is the way, but most time we use engineering. So apply. So then this way you can change few things in like I want to keep it like 6%, which is the original one. And then you can change the labels one, two, three, and then you can change the label of uh, like X, Y, Z. So you can change the color from here. Okay, apply. So this is a way you can model a transient heat transfer problem in a battle. I hope you like this video. Thank you very much for watching. You can leave comments for your feedback.